and you had to be very, very courageous exactly. because I think you're going back to slavery and et cetera. Exactly. And certainly if you wanted to talk about those centuries, yeah. the uh, individuals that you're going to highlight had to be very, very extraordinary and uh, very, very informed individuals. And so yeah. let's uh, start off by having you to uh, simply open us up by talking about what you consider to be some of the individuals that met uh, your idea of profile. Well, I think we have to go back to the 18th century and perhaps further back, uh, because in the 18th century you had a number of, of black Americans emerging as founders of institutions. You had Andrew Bryan, David George, George Lyell, who started the first black churches in the South. Uh, you had Richard Allen and, and Peter Spencer and James Varick and others who started the first black churches in the North. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about uh, the earliest black profiles in courage, I have to go back to the 18th century and look at uh, those African Americans mm -hmm. who started the first black institutions. We're not only talking about churches, mm -hmm. we're talking about free African societies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because these institutions were designed to what? Mm. Advance the liberation and empowerment mm -hmm. of black Americans. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about Andrew Bryan and, 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 and Richard Allen and James Varick and others, they founded the very first black institutions under the shadow of slavery. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh -huh. There was a lot of slavery and persecution going on in those years, but they realized that if black people were to be autonomous on any level, if they were to have any control, any control at all over their destiny, spiritual and otherwise, they had to what? Develop and maintain their own institution. And it's important that these individuals be recognized, dealing with the profile in courage, yes. recognizing that we're talking about a period where it was against the law to teach <laughs> African Americans to read or write. Exactly. And against the law to uh, uh, establish religious organizations <laughs> and to talk about somebody establishing a church yeah. for African Americans in slavery, it had to be an extraordinary individual. And so I, th I, can, I think I understand exactly and, what you and mean. And quite a courageous act. It had to be. Now, when, when, when Richard Allen, of course, walked out of St. George's Methodist, Methodist Episcopal Church mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, that was a courageous mm -hmm. act. It had to be. When Andrew Bryan in Savannah, Georgia, mm -hmm. was whipped mm -hmm. because he started the first African Baptist church there, mm -hmm. you're talking about profiles and courage right. in, the, in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. And their work, of course, extended over into the early 19th century when you have the rise of institutional black churches, mm -hmm. Baptist, Methodist, mm -hmm. Presbyterian, Episcopal with Absalom Jones. Mm -hmm. All of these leaders were profiles in courage. And they actually started the institutions that would serve as the de facto platform mm -hmm. for black liberation the, 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 the movement. The abolitionist movement would have to come out of those Exactly. And, and it was against the law in all of the southern states for any African Americans to, uh, to, 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 to promote or to advocate uh, liberation. Exactly. As you said, and, 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 and all of these individuals, many of these individuals were freedmen, yeah. but in many instances, freedmen were subject to the same kind of constraints that slaves were constrained exactly. with. Exactly, and many of them had come out of the institution of slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Allen had been a slave in Delaware, and Andrew Bryan, a slave in, in Georgia. Uh, so you have to understand that they started these institutions under the shadow of the institution of slavery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was courageous act because they understood mm -hmm. and they suffered through reprisals, mm -hmm. even the risk of limb and death. Okay, well, so what we're start these we'll institutions. take our first commercial break and then we'll be back. We'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, that's, yeah, because uh, to do what they did, exactly. you know, it's getting slow to talk about. Uh, huh? Oh, it's coming out? Oh, okay. Maybe I should. 
Could you just stick it in your pocket? No, 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 not up there. Just stick it in your pocket. Okay. Back in, yeah. Okay. I want to make sure. Wait, hold up. Oh, just put it in the seat behind you, Dr. Baldwin, if you can. There you it. go. I don't think it'll fall down mm-hmm. from there. No, I don't. Yeah. Is that all right? Is this supposed to be plugged into any time? No, no. Oh, okay. I think it's all right. I'll just hold on to it. No, no, you can't hold on. No, to, 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 to swing on around here. Uh-huh. But for me, like that, N- not exactly on. Just, just put it, put it, take it, put it in your seat. Right in my behind, seat? In, in, no, in your, in, yeah, right back, back in. Is that yeah, all right? back there. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that, that'll hold it. Okay. Yeah, that'll hold it. Okay. You know, just, yeah, I like that. Now, come okay. on back around here. <laughs> Is that all right? I hope so. Okay. Okay, now look at, now, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Don't swing the chair now. Okay. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin and the topic is profiles and courage of the African-American experience. And uh, Dr. Baldwin, let's uh, allow you to uh, continue our discussion Mm -hmm. from the uh, last segment dealing with individuals who were uh, courageous in a real sense, and especially those individuals who were uh, freedmen or mm-hmm. individuals who were slaves, and I think as you indicated earlier, it was against the law exactly. to teach a slave to read or write. Exactly. And those slaves who might become freedmen understood yeah. that uh, the difficult problems that they had to face if they were going to talk about getting out and establishing a church and et cetera, going and dealing exactly. with Exactly. Now, I, I spoke of Richard Allen and Andrew Bryan, those early church founders, and they understood that if their people were going to be liberated and empowered. They had to own their own institutions. If they were going to be autonomous and have any control at all over their spiritual destiny and, and their destiny in other, in, in other uh, senses, they had to own their own institutions. So they founded churches, and these churches in the 19th century became de facto platforms uh, for the struggle against, what, slavery? <laughs> against colonization and for emancipation. In the 19th century, of course, you get people like Harriet Tubman and and Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass, all of whom were profiles in courage Mm -hmm. because they used the black church as a kind of uh, de facto platform to struggle against slavery, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, for abolitionism, uh, against colonization, and to advance the cause of black people as it related not only to religion, but to education, uh, the right to participate in the democracy through voting, etc. They fought for that. Uh, black churches were schools. Uh, they were institutions that encouraged economic cooperation in the black community, economic self-sufficiency. So what you had in the 18th century, of course, was the movement to start these institutions in the 19th century to use these institutions as a kind of de facto Mm -hmm. platform uh, for black liberation and empowerment. Uh, So when you get to the late 19th century, of course, these institutions are well-placed, they are established. Late 19th century, there's an effort to establish black institutions throughout Mm -hmm. the South i.e. churches, et cetera. Uh, And these institutions were designed uh, to what? Represent Mm -hmm. black people and to be uh, a a social and political basis or power basis for the struggle for black liberation. And and, and I also noticed, Dr. Baldwin, you mentioned uh, a couple of females dealing with this. And and, and to be an African-American female during this time, uh, to talk about, uh, well, go on and talk about uh, exactly. Some of those now courageous... we often focus on Frederick Douglass, Douglass. in the 19th century, mm-hmm. Henry Highland Garnett, mm-hmm. Martin Delaney. They were all great leaders, but you have to look also at Sojourner Truth mm-hmm. and Harriet Tubman, Good. Uh-huh. Uh, both of whom were slaves at one time mm-hmm. in their lives. Uh, uh, Sojourner Truth, as you well know, became an important activist not only 
against abol against slavery, mm -hmm. but also for women's rights. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, famous for the phrase, ain't I a woman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because she was concerned not only about the liberation of slaves, she was concerned about the liberation and empowerment of women, women. as well. Very good. And uh -huh. Harriet Tubman, Tubman. Uh -huh. who, uh -huh. uh, as you well know, was a conductor on the Underground Railroad, mm -hmm. uh, who made it possible. She took 19 trips mm -hmm. into the South, mm -hmm. and some 300 slaves were liberated under her leadership. Now, that's, cur that's courage. Exactly. That's courage for, for a female yes. to be involved. It's one, as I think you indicated, it's one thing for Frederick Douglass yeah. to be an abolitionist, to, to, to talk about going into the South and yes. dealing with slavery, but to think in terms of females exactly. and where females stood within that, that exactly. category. Exactly. So you talk about James Forden, you talk about Frederick Douglass, 